pagan, heathen. What do these words mean? Who are pagans? Who are heathens? Well, if you look at the uh, the origins of the words pagan and heathen alike, you will come back to a link, at least in, in, in terms of the word pagan here. It's very similar with heathen. A pagan is a person of non-Christian, non-Jewish, non-Islamic faith. It comes from the late Latin term paganus, which in, in classical Latin means villager, rustic, civilian, non-combatant. As an adjective, it means of the country, of a village, country people, a province, a rural district. So, if you try to define pagans based on the origins of the word, it would be those backward country bumpkins who staunchly adhere to their old traditions and don't embrace the cosmopolitanism, the multiculturalism, the metropolitanism. Just like you see today, back then you saw a little bit of an issue with the people of the cities setting themselves above everyone else and seeing those in the country who tend to adhere to, to traditions more as the backwards people in need of either educating or eradicating. And in the case of uh, Christianity, it was the latter. But if you were to try to throw that definition, I don't think many people would necessarily agree with it in the modern context. They would instead just say it's anybody who, well, they'd throw out the, um, the locational part of that and reserve it for anybody who is not Christian, Jewish, or Islamic in faith. And... Fair enough, that's generally how it's used, especially when it's applied to Europeans. Uh, you don't really hear uh, Shinto monks being called pagans. They're called Shinto monks. But that's a different discussion. This begs the question, though. What definition would be um, appropriate? Now, there's been kind of a, a growing, you know, disagreement here with one side claiming that anybody who does not believe in the gods as literal, literal beings aren't pagans. Those who don't believe in the gods aren't pagans, whereas those who believe in the gods are But this kind of does something interesting in that it makes the whole difference between folkish pagans and universalist pagans a completely moot point. Folkish pagans <clears throat> believe that paganism, um, and to use a specific example here, uh, Germanic paganism is the natural faith, the you know, proper faith, if you want to, if you want to really get, you know, on point with it, of the Germanic peoples, and this includes uh, most, most, not all, but a good portion of uh, the Germanic peoples, which is, you know, uh, Germans. Scandinavians, that's kind of lumped together because uh, the names of the gods vary a little bit, but once you get down to the core um, folklore and beliefs and traditions, they're about the same. That that paganism is for them. That Celtic paganism is for people of Celtic blood. And, you know, there's some... You know, crossover there. 
and a lot of similarities as well. But that's generally how focus pagans see things. Your native faith is for your people, nobody else. Now, on the other side of this, <clears throat> you have the universalist pagans who don't believe that it's a matter of blood, that it's simply a matter of belief. It wouldn't matter if you were from Zimbabwe. If you wanted to believe in Odin and Thor and Freyr, then you're, you're a pagan. You're one of us. Blood has nothing to do with it. With it. It's all about the, the matter of faith. So, let's take this and apply it to the idea that um, you are pagan if you believe in the old gods. Well, then, you're saying that the universalists are more real pagans if they believe in the old gods literally than, for instance, the... Uh, uh, I'm going to call them the archetypal pagans, the ones who see the gods as archetypes to aspire to uh, as not real pagans. You are including the same people who buy into the degeneracy as pagans and leaving out those who would otherwise be behaving very traditionally, very folkishly, very pagan. Me, personally, I'm smack dab in the middle between believing the gods as literal beings and as archetypes. They're not mutually exclusive. I see the gods as, as literal beings that part of their uh, projection into our reality is through the awakening of these archetypes within us. They are our bio-spirit, our folk soul. They are the consciousness that drives the strength and will of our people. They're both. And I point that out to show that I'm not saying this because I'm only favoring my side. But other than that, it's entirely besides the point. <clears throat> so let's take two examples. Let's take somebody who uh, says they're pagan. You know, they they wear Mjolnir. They say they believe in the old gods literally. They perform bloat. <clears throat> they recognize our high festivals. But, aside from that, they drink in excess... sit around watching sports ball all day, don't really concern themselves with their children's education, you know, things like that. The traps of modernity that are ruining the lives of so many people. And on the other hand, <clears throat> you have a man who takes care of his family, you know, maybe homeschools his kids, takes care of the land that he lives on, does his best to raise his own food. It, you know, follows traditions, maybe follows the high festivals and whatnot, but otherwise just believes that the gods are personifications of <clears throat> the archetypes that should be aspired to. Would you say that he's not a pagan? Would you instead favor to call 
the pagan, the degenerate? Would you favor the lip service or would you favor the action? Because that's where folkish paganism really kind of shines. We are a faith, a people, a worldview of action, of doing over saying. Because, common phrase, talk is cheap. It's cheap. You can say you'll do something and then not do it. You can sit there and blab all you want about how much you uh, respect and believe in the old gods. But do you show it? Do you do right by them by taking care of your, your family, yourself, your tribe, and honoring your ancestors? Which, by the way, ancestor veneration is something that even an atheist can do. Even an atheist can pay respects to their ancestors. And paying respects to your ancestors is a very folkish pagan thing. So, if you go out there and you presume that just because you believe in the old gods literally, and that you read the Eddas, your scholarly, ed you've got your scholarly education in the Eddas, and you can read them front to back from memory, then I think you're missing the mark. I think you're greatly missing the mark. Because we venerate our ancestors, which again is something that even the atheist, uh, atheist, the, the archetypal pagans do. They pay respects to their ancestors. And they do this not only through recognizing the strengths of their ancestors, but by also providing for their families, raising their kids right, fighting for their people, doing everything within their power to try to make an impact to save the existence of their people. And if you have the utter gall to say that they aren't real pagans, then you need to get your priorities straightened out. <laughs>